Welcome to Team Aquascape. And yes, I'm Greg Whitsock, the Pond Guy, and I'm normally showcasing how people live the Aquascape lifestyle. Today, I'm gonna to be building the Aquascape lifestyle. And the reason that I'm in my construction shirt today is yes, I am going to get my hands dirty because we are at the infamous Colleen Heitzler's house. The president, the person who actually runs Aquascape, it's certainly not me, seeing all of her dogs, Blue and Penny. And this water feature was put in 18 years ago. Was it 18 years ago, Colleen? 20. Oh my gosh, she's been there for 20 years. Right when she started, we put a beautiful pondless waterfall in. That has pretty much just run itself for 20 years, huh? We've done very little. We've planted it a little. We put some plants around it, but I, yeah, nothing. You look like you're ready just like me to get your hands dirty today. Oh, stop it. I'm ready. Awesome. We got Chris up there getting ready to film it. So Brian, the man with the plan. We're just gonna basically replicate this, but update it with like a new facelift, right? Yeah, like I was telling you earlier, there's not too many different options as far as the design. It's kind of like looking at a kitchen that was built 20 years ago. Yes. And sometimes you just need to give it a facelift and a little update. So I think we're gonna come in with some of our new elements. I'd love to sneak in a fire element here or there. Yep. I know her and Bob really like the idea of some of the bowls with like the little horsetail falls that come off. Yep. So I don't know where those are gonna go yet but we've got them so we're gonna kind of bring them in here but waterfalls is gonna stay over here I might be able to get that waterfall a touch higher because we're gonna generate some soil okay pull all that out I mean that's an old pile falls I mean I don't even know what what, what num model is that that's still 2500 ultra falls or something yeah I don't know what it is look at this this is a piece of stump that we actually used wow to build the waterfall yeah it's still <laughs> there it's 20 like years later completely solid it's definitely in there but yeah we're gonna change all this we're gonna put in a spillway instead of a Bio falls because what's the point? Uh huh. We're gonna put in aqua blocks. This was built so long ago <laughs> we didn't have aqua blocks. So the way we would actually build a pondless waterfall was dig a massive hole and fill it with rock and gravel. Right. And that would all get clogged over time. So we're gonna change all of that. Some of these big granite boulders I actually love, and they'll tie in really nice with the moss rock pieces we brought. Yep. Our biggest obstacle I think is gonna be this hemlock. It's beautiful. Growing, growing in a very weird shape. Yep. Which is why I like it so much. Yes. And I know if we try to dig this thing out, we'll probably kill it. So we're just gonna try to work really carefully around it and then tuck the new rock in back underneath, maybe get a bowl kind of in this area. So that'll make it a bit of a challenge. It'll be a challenge. But you love the hemlock. And you just don't think they just don't do well transplanted? I just know it's old. It's been here for 20 years. Right. And so even though it doesn't look like that big of a plant, it's got a 20 year root structure on it. So okay. trying to dig that out would be next to impossible. It just put it in shock and kill it. Okay. Especially because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're not plants people. All right, so we got the machine here. So basically just start with them, all right? Yeah, we're gonna drain, start, we'll get a pump down here. We'll drain out that reservoir. And as that's pumping out, we'll just start pulling all this granite out. We've got a tarp we'll, we'll lay out over here so we can put all the granite and gravel and all that stuff and then have a big pile that we can work from. All right, so it's the three of us and Colleen. Let's get started. What was your perspective on our Madam President with her pond keeping abilities? This is an old reservoir, and as we drain this and the whole thing drained out, the epic amount of sludge that's sitting in the mm -hmm. bottom mm -hmm. tells me one thing, that Colleen is not a great pond owner. <laughs> I'm a lover. He loves it. <laughs> you you were you really weren't exaggerating when you saved nothing in 20 years, huh? <laughs> I mean, there's this much sludge in the bottom. You would guess you had 20 koi, and there's no koi in here. You know what, Bob? Maybe every other year pumps that all the way out and cleans it, so that might be. Don't lie. Maybe five. <laughs> maybe every other five years. <laughs> maybe every ten or so. Maybe he's done that. Low he maintenance, pondless. Without telling me. Well, here's what's nice: is if they're only cleaning it once every five years or so, <laughs> and it still was running, and it actually. Actually, we were just saying, it looks really good. Like, I would love to have this with the big granite boulders, and I think the movement of the stream looks cool, and that's why we're not changing the design of it. Like, But we're adding aqua blocks, which will allow us to run it year-round, Colleen. Winter Correct. runner. I love that. Winter running, a fire element someplace, mm -hmm. and maybe... A facelift of rocks. Yeah, just some other stuff, but it looks good. Hey! Bus driver Bob's back. It's going. Thank you. <laughs> Why don't you get your hands dirty? Yeah. And we saw that you cleaned out the uh, basin about 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a dirt trap. That's what you got to wear, huh? <laughs> Oh 
back then, I guess it was a good method, but <laughs> Pre because, because we didn't have aqua blocks, what we did is we just dug oversized holes and filled them up with cobbles. The idea was the space between six inch cobbles or even two to three inch pieces of gravel gave you about 2.2 gallons of water per cubic foot. So we would calculate how big of a stream we had or how much water was in that stream and then use that formula of 2.2 gallons per cubic foot. And we would dig these massive, massive holes and then fill it with rock and gravel. Then along came aqua blocks and got us back, you know, to that 7.48 gallons of, of water per cubic foot. So the nice thing about the aqua blocks is you could dig a hole a fraction of the size and store the same amount of water. So one of their big wishes is to have a winter running water feature. And so we're going to dig this out and then put in those aqua blocks and give her, what did we say, 600 gallons of water? Something like that. If we take a close look at reservoir down here, one of the other big reasons we wanted to move to aqua blocks is over time, especially over 20 years, that gravel just gets clogged up with stuff. And as it gets clogged up, the easiest way to clean it is just kind of go like this with your hands. But that stuff then moves and migrates further down in and further down in. And over 20 years, you have just as much build up in the bottom of the rock and gravel as you do up on the top because they've just been doing that year after year after year. So the thing doesn't even come close to holding 2.2 gallons of water per cubic foot because all that interstitial space has been clogged with muck, right? So, you did really good on that word. Right, interstitial space, yeah. I paused so everybody could hear what I was saying. For effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the great thing too about the aqua blocks and the pump vault now is the maintenance of it, right? Yes. Maintenance, we just put a bib line over the top. If it gets clogged, we just pull off a small sheet of fabric and you're talking about two five gallon buckets worth of gravel that can either then be cleaned or just removed and put new gravel on, which is so much easier than obviously what I'm doing right now. Yeah, but well, what a difference R&D from 20 years makes, right? I guess that's why they give me a paycheck or R&D. It's, no, it's just, no. it's, all, it's all right here. It's all right here. <laughs> Get rid of your biggest problem in the world right now. You can put me where Jimmy Hoffa is. She found the horn. I got it. <laughs> yeah, maybe the most important thing for her. Have you ever done an excavator? Never. Okay. Oh, careful. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. So far away. She might be able to figure out how to fling the bucket off. <laughs> okay, this. So we just got done eating lunch. Brian has a majority of the hole dug behind me. We have a special guest, Sean Baker, out here. He's one of our teammates. He's from, where are you from? Traverse City, Michigan, right? Yep, Traverse City. So Sean, is this your first time putting together aqua blocks? Yeah, first time. How'd I do teaching you? Pretty good, I managed to get it all the way together, so, <laughs> so I don't think it's gonna fall apart. Well, I'll make sure to double check your work here in a second. It looks like you're on the right track. So you can see Sean is already starting to put the A and the B panels together. We have 15 large aqua blocks that's gonna make up the reservoir for the hole that's dug over there. And we're gonna see if Sean can do this faster than me. Stay tuned. <laughs> project like this we sure don't need more rock but for some reason we brought more and this is only one load but the big reason of redoing this thing was to get some of these angular big moss rock pieces in there we always like putting big giant boulders in just because it instantly gives the pond more of this I was born here feeling than I was man-made and so Chris is just about ready to dump some big boulders that guy's massive in fact I don't know if our machine will pick that one up or not but we'll find out this is like super dangerous, and you guys are getting to witness it. Nothing bad could happen except for breaking the truck. You know, one rolls into Greg's Jeep over there. That's not what, that's not, that's the least of my concerns. <laughs> it's that guy I'm kind of worried about. Like it's gonna shoot out like a torpedo. Okay, Chris, let me get in there. <laughs> I think I could ride that one down. Okay, there's one. <laughs> one. Oh my God, it's gonna just. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you're good. Perfect. <laughs> So 
So Chris cutting the fabric means we're at the point where we're about ready to put our aqua box in. So we've got our hole excavated because of some existing roots off of this guy because of limitations going that way and not wanting to come out further in the yard. We went from 15 aqua box to 12 aqua box, which gives us 400 gallons of water, which should be really more than enough to keep this thing winter running. On top of the 400 gallons though, we also have the liner is going to come up about 12 inches higher than the top of the aqua box, which will give us easily another 150 to 200 gallons. So we have about a 600 gallon tank that they'll be able to operate come winter time, which should really keep this thing going year round. I love that we were able to work around the existing hemlock. Anytime you can get those branches kind of overhanging some of the areas, this one up here is really cool as the branches are going to overhang parts of the stream. A lot of the soil that we took out of here, actually we made that thing shallower and then a little bit wider, but we've got a bigger berm going in here. We're going to get rid of this Norway maple here because it's kind of dying up in there and because of these two other silver maples it's really hurting its chances of rebounding it just gets so shaded back in here and so it's just not going to do really well so we've got a much bigger berm that's going to come in here we got a bunch of soil on its way we're going to cut this maple down open this up get some different plants up in here i think we'll get a red bud and a couple other things up in here maybe another hemlock or two but things are coming together another thing i wanted to show you is people always ask how close can you plant plants to the edge of the liner without it piercing the liner and the roots on 99 percent of your plants aren't going to go through the liner like here's this hemlock and you can see it's almost like root bound because the roots have just been following the contours of the boulders and the liner that was right in here so the roots of this hemlock have no idea that on the other side is a thousand gallons of water or in this case hundreds of gallons of water but you're never going to pierce through the roots just follow the shape of whatever you built in here and so we've got that one here you can see the roots on the bottom of the stream all of those things probably coming from this silver maple over here and then if you look at this one down here jump back down in the hole check out this hemlock so the roots on this hemlock <laughs> just kind of created these big bulbs and i don't know what you'd call them gordy looking masses but the old pump vault used to be right in this area a liner came back further and then we just filled that with gravel so these roots have just kind of formed the shape of whatever the liner used to look like so we're going to backfill a lot of this with new soil and protect these roots and make sure we don't damage this hemlock at all but nothing went through the liner anywhere all right next step liners coming in then we'll do our vault our aqua blocks and then backfill <laughs> Chris, like, what do you think? Did we get as far as we needed to? No. <laughs> I think I would imagine every time we'd ask that question, the answer would be no. We'd mm -hmm. love to get a little further, but I'm comfortable with where we're at, right? We got our reservoir in, we got the 12 aqua blocks, we got everything backfilled. We were able to recycle like old vaults and aqua blocks. You can see some of these aqua blocks have seen some better days, but these are all leftovers from the um, academy, not the academy. The Sandbox the Studio. The Sandbox Studio, the Artist of the Year competition thing. So this is done and when I love is when we finish the boring stuff you know getting the infrastructure in that means tomorrow we get to do all the fun stuff and that means building waterfalls building waterfalls i think it's really important though that the viewers take note of what's happening behind me and one thing greg always says is it's better to work on your business than in your business so i guess that's what he's doing now <laughs> There's, there's him and the president of the company working on the business, not in the business. You wonder, you yeah. wonder what like what they're talking about. Yeah, are they meditating <laughs> together? <What> are they? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys post what you think they're talking about, and we'll see you tomorrow where we get to do the fun stuff. Yeah.